Eight years ago, you two were Citadel's top spies, but we were double-crossed by one of our own, and your memories were erased. I brought you here because I need your help. I coached Little Lee. There's my guy. My favorite line in this is when you have to say, Mason Kane, top spy, hot stuff. And I'm sure as a Scot, it probably made you blush because you're so self-deprecating. Yeah, that was not easy. Uh, so what I would <laughs> yeah. love for you to do is to name each other. <laughs> so you, so it would be like Priyanka Chopra, top actress, and then what would be her sort of catchphrase? Or what, how would you name Priyanka and how would you name Richard? Gosh, this is really hard. <laughs> I know, because I'm like, I'm like, she's... In awesome, but I can't they like swear. That. No, that's Gosh, it. F and awesome. F and awesome. F and awesome. Thank you, Chopra Top Spy. F and awesome. Hey. Okay. Richard Madden, Top Spy. Sexy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just really replaced hot with sexy. I'll it's take so it. Original. I will take it. I love it. People now have said he a lot is worse. blushing. So now, original. Now you are blushing. Yes, now you are blushing. <laughs> Um, and then speaking of which, the show very much, I think, as much as this is action, it's epic, it hinges on this incredible tension between the two of you. It's almost like as an audience member, am I going to kiss this person or kill this person? And there's so many twists and turns you don't know. How did the two of you sort of create that tension in those moments as actors? I, I'm sure it's not easy to do that. It's not, but I think, you know, we understand the assignment and that's the joy of these two characters is like every time they come together, they have this weird connection. They're drawn to each other. It's magnetic. They can't explain it. Even if they don't want it, they're drawn to each other. It's that really annoying, amazing thing, which you can't tell if you want to kill someone or if you want to you know, sleep with them or be with them. But that's fun. As actors, we always try to lean into that. We always try to find what the obstacle is because it's the obstacle that makes the scene a lot more fun. Um, and we always dug into that whenever we had our scenes together. Yeah. It would be very hard as spies to have a healthy relationship. What would be your spy relationship advice? Don't be in one. Don't be a spy. <laughs> oh, don't be a spy. Don't be a spy. Don't be, don't in, be in one. <laughs> That's why we work well together. <laughs> you finish each other's sentences. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Opening scene is the prettiest train I've ever seen in my life. I know. So gorgeous. And you have nailed the slow-mo. It's like the quintessential when you're growing up. You always <laughs> wish you could do that slow-mo shot that you see yeah. in movies. And I feel like that is the shot. It's like a classic. Tips for nailing the slow-mo kind of walk. Though. Don't walk in slow-mo. <laughs> <laughs> Most people forget about that whenever, like even on your phone, when you're like, oh, I'm going to do a slow motion walk, they start walking slower. Yeah. But you actually need to walk faster than you need to, because then um, if you walk faster than you normally would, then the slow-mo hits in the right places. So slightly faster. This is a good tip it's for good life, tip. for Instagram, yes, for all is. of it. And then for you, there's a scene, there's nice knife catching scene for both of you. But I did a beer commercial one time and I had to catch a bottle. And just going like that, it was a fake bottle. They put it in post. I couldn't get, 20 takes later, it was so unnatural. So the knife sort of catching thing, how did you nail that one? I just did this and they put it in in CGI afterwards. Don't tell them oh, that. sorry, can I not say that? No. You caught it, Yeah, I did it. Like, I'm just really he good just at went, these things. Um, He's hot stuff. Yeah, no, I don't think they were going to trust Stanley Sitchi to throw a knife at me. So they're like, <laughs> or you, just you to it. catch it. Or me to catch it. And there's not a chance of that. So we rely on VFX. Yeah. <laughs> I know you said in another interview that this show, you feel like a piece of your soul is with the show. Can you sort of describe why? I mean, this is such an epic undertaking. The fact that this is a flagship series, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to have so many iterations in so many cities. Why did you say that? Like, was it the grueling nature of it? It just, it seems like, even in the first three episodes. For me, it, yeah. it feels like the investment in the show has been long. You know, when you when you do a movie, it's like 90 days, you know, you're, you're done with the character. Um, TV, any long form entertainment anyway is hard. And then you live with your characters for a long time. We shot this over a year and a half. We shot it during 2021, which was like, you know, prime COVID. Um, we shot it in London, Atlanta. Um, and it was just a tough shoot. It was yeah. physically demanding, emotionally de demanding for me. I just, so I felt like the commitment to it that it required from me like I had to leave a piece of me behind to be able to get up every day and go and 
and deliver. And there was such a sense of accomplishment when we finished the show. Like I, I was like, Whoa. and then when you watch it the first time, you're like, okay, that's why we did it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Anything to add? It's so ep it's just epic. It's just incredibly Thank epic. You. I mean, I'm thinking of I don't even know. I heard something about a submarine, and I don't even seen that. But your skiing that scene, where good. was there skiing? And there was skiing. There is a submarine. Uh, the submarine stuff is really cool. It's You're going to cool. see that later. Um, but it's huge. It's just such a massive scale. So I'm asking everybody today. In the show, your memory is wiped, but you dream about Priyanka, which is the most relatable thing I've ever heard, because mm. I dreamt about you last night. I don't know why, but <laughs> I did. <laughs> Who do you think, if your memories were erased from your careers, okay. which actor or actress that you worked with do you think you would dream about? Like today? Yeah. Today, I'll only dream of Madden. Yeah, same. Like, or cool, yeah. maybe Stanley Tucci or Joe, because we've only seen each other's faces in this junket, for the, and we're only going to see each other's faces. For the for next couple of years, couple of years. <laughs> so I think th there's no way I could erase Richard from my nope. from my memories. It's been a couple of years. Season two, I think, has been renewed. But if you were going to moonlight on one of the other shows in one of the other cities, which ones are you choosing? Um, I mean, I'd love to. I'd love to go to Italy with the show. Yeah, I mean, I really would love to go to Tuscany. That would be nice. I don't mind Goa either. I want to take you to Goa. You'd love it. Um, between both shows, there are places we would love right our characters place. to go. You told me to trust you. Why would you trust me? I'm exceedingly untrustworthy. I'm a spy. So I'm going to ask you, Stanley Tucci, top actor, what's your catchphrase? My catchphrase? Yeah, what would be your sort of MO, how you would describe yourself? How I would describe myself? Yes, I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, Great God. Great to get things oh, going. Oh, God. <laughs> other than... I had the Russos do it. Other, uh, what did they say? They called themselves Hot Stuff, number one. <laughs> <laughs> I think they kept it more yeah. low-key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, hot Stuff, I'm not going to say Hot Stuff. Um, <coughs> I would say um, Conflicted. <laughs> about about having to answer that Everything. question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the show has so many twists and turns. I'm wondering for you as an actor, did you read the entire thing? Did you go episode to episode? Do you like to kind of know the whole thing to shape your your the arc of your character, or do you like to be sort of more kept in the dark about what your character? Oh no, going? no, I have to know as really? much as possible. Oh yeah, it's incredibly helpful. I have done things where they're sort of releasing bits and pieces as you're sh shooting, and, and you're like, "Can I please have the next script? Can I please?" Mm. I mean, I'll often ask for just a sort of <clears throat> overall. Uh, synopsis of what's going to happen you know through the six or ten or whatever episodes because it's really helpful it, it informs how you behave in every scene yeah um not having that knowledge you nothing can really be specific was he snarky as snarky on the page as he is delightfully snarky as he is yeah he, he was and then we you know amped it up a bit. really yeah that was your choice, or that was sort of but like a collective, of yeah. a collective yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, the dinner table scene with you and the great Leslie Manville. Oh my God, she's amazing. So wonderful. I wish she was here today. Me so too. Let's talk about her behind her back. Tell sure. me how amazing she was. She was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. I'd always admired her, um, and then, you know, getting to work with her, even though it was just that one scene really we had together, and we were barely, you know, we were quite a distance away from each other. Uh, it's it was very impressive. Does She's it change impressive. things when you're further away? The dynamic between you know like the physicality of it because you are sort of further away and you're of course you're just like in real life, right? The farther away you are, the harder it is to communicate with you. In the series, Richard's character loses his memory, but he's still dreaming about Priyanka's character. Mm -hmm. There's something about it. If you lost your memory of your career, which actor or actress that you've worked with do you think you would dream about? I probably dream about Meryl Streep. Yeah. I needed to take a pause after you said that. Yeah. Just have a moment of silence because we love yeah. her so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, she was influential to me when I was young. We were only like 11 years apart or something. Uh, but she was very influential to me when I first, you know, when watching movies and seeing her in the theater. Um, and then once I got to know her and work with her, she was even more influential. You're all in with the Russos, the Electric State. You're also in. I know. What is it about the Russos that have been, has been unique to you um, as an actor in the way they work? Well, I said to them when we were working on The Electric State after we had done, you know, reshoots on Citadel, 
I said, why didn't I? I've been doing this for 40 years. How come I didn't meet you earlier? Because really? nothing, th this is wonderful. They're wonderful. They're really smart. They're really nice. Um, they are incredibly efficient. I mean, their efficiency is staggering. Um, there are two other people that I've worked with who have this kind of efficiency. One was Steven Spielberg, mm. and the other was Robert Zemeckis. Oh. Where they they know like they know exactly what they're doing, and when. And it's not that they're without <clears throat> the ability to collaborate. They're incredibly collaborative. They have a real vision for the piece. They have a real understanding of the technical aspects of film. Yeah particularly filmmaking nowadays, but they also have a sensitivity to human behavior and emotion and what an actor will need, but all, like what a character needs, but also what an actor might need. They're amazing. Which is interesting that they did Marvel, but that's the thing about Endgame and Infinity War that yeah. people love is... There's a humanity to it. Yeah. I mean, when you see, when you see, and I know a lot of those actors, you know, and you see those performances and they're really great. Like it's really... Yeah. quite touching, uh, uh, you know, in the scope of this huge whatever it is. Well, this huge whatever it is, such an ambitious show. Yeah. The fact that this is a flagship show, Yeah. what they're doing has never been done before, no. where they're going to have these spinoffs in different cities and different languages. Yeah. Is that something that it appealed to you as an actor? Was Is it sort of the broader aspect of it, or is it mostly <clears> the character? <throat> and if there is for you to be for you to have a cameo in one of the other cities, which one are you cameoing in? Well, obviously Italy, because, I was say you know, yes. I mean, come on. <laughs> and also I can, I could, I could do it in both languages. And you could so whip up a meal so too. I could whip that would up be a your meal. alter ego in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was not aware that they were gonna take this <clears throat> and, and have different, have it done in different countries. I didn't know that. It was only when I started shooting that I became aware of that. And I thought, well, that's amazing. How do you even do that? I still don't know how you do that. But yeah. but they're doing it, and I think it's I think it's super exciting. You've played so many ep iconic characters. I mean, sitting across from you is just such a delight. <coughs> well, thank what you. What about this particular one? What traits in him were most delicious to you to play? What I like about him is that he's very funny. It's a real caustic and dark sense of humor, but he has a great admiration and love for the people that he works with and protecting them is crucial. But the ultimate, his ultimate goal is for Citadel to, to come back to life and destroy Manticore. And he'll make any sacrifice necessary for that to happen. And how He's many, a very moral person. How many twists and turns will we see for him? Just so many. Really? Yeah. Did it blow your mind too, reading it? Yeah. 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 Wow. It's really cool. Wow. Yeah. Whoever betrayed us is readying for something cataclysmic. My favorite line from this is when um, the line, Mason Cain tops by hot stuff, yes. that he calls himself that. <laughs> yeah. So I would love you f for you to name each other using sort of the same thing. Oh my God. Give each other each a Each other? A yes, can we do ourselves? You so can do easier. yourself. Can, or, can we use yeah. hot stuff or yes. no? We have to do the yes. other one. <laughs> get, as, get as creative as you would like. Can I, can I be a spy? Sure. Oh my God, this is like, this is one of those questions where you're on the spot and your brain just starts melting down. <laughs> Are we doing ourselves? Yeah. I'm gonna do myself. Okay. Yeah, do this is what, this is, this is the difference between in front of camera talent and behind camera talent. Okay. Right? Slow and steady. Wait, okay. are you supposed to go Anthony <laughs> Russo? Russo yeah. Top producer, <laughs> slow and steady. Top producer, slow and steady, right? <laughs> and I'm supposed to go Joe Russo, uh, dad, um, so it's done. What'd you I say? Don't know. Slow and steady. Right, slow I have no steady. idea. I I'm going to call you futurist because that's what you've called yourself. We oh, have. Okay. We do. We do. Like we'll take that. We'll take that. Yeah. Take that, yeah. So, given that, I thought one yeah. of you was going to say that. How are you've called yourself futurist, mm -hmm. especially in this business? It feels like in this is sort of the first of its kind, where we're getting a series where there's yeah. going to be spinoffs in different cities using their native language. So how? has being a futurist, how, how have you sort of allowed yourself uh, free reign with this series? How has it sort of allowed you to do yeah. what you've always wanted to do? The compelling yeah. element of this series was when Jen Salky, who runs Amazon Prime, called us and said, listen, I want to use the resources and uh, infrastructure at Amazon to empower storytellers around the world, and I think we could come up with a narrative 
that could be shared. And we said, that's an incredible idea. Storytelling is one of the last binding elements that we have in this incredibly divisive world. You know, you, you mentioned futurists. The reason, we like looking forward. Mm-hmm. We're, we're fine with disruption. It's compelling to us, right? Uh, uh, because out of disruption become new ideas, right? And it, maybe it opens doors that, uh, that were closed before. Uh, and certainly, you know, um, you know, everything can be improved upon. And I think uh, Ant and I are most compelled by global storytelling because, uh, you know, we, we're we collaborators. It's all we've done for 30 years. We have to sit and talk to each other all day long and collaborate uh, um, uh, telling stories. We want to open that up. It's fun for us. It's engaging for us. It's inspiring for us to work with voices from around the world that are we're all feeding into this story and creating it together. It's like this giant Mad Lib that we're all working on. I'm wondering if, in, in the series, Richard Madden's character loses his memory, but he dreams about Priyanka, which is the most mm-hmm. relatable thing I could imagine. Yeah. If the two of you had your memories wiped out from your careers, who's the person you think you would still dream about? <laughs> I'm, I have to say my wife. <laughs> yeah. In the business, though, not no, your in family. The yeah. <laughs> An actor, I was going to say, how could we possibly answer the question any other way other than our wives? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, we're keeping personal okay. out of it. I will just say Priyanka, because Priyanka. Who, wouldn't dream, who wouldn't dream of Priyanka? I dream about I actually yeah. dreamt about Priyanka last night yeah, after there watching you go. this. See, it's like, you know. You know, I don't know why, but the person that popped into my head was Chris Evans. <laughs> America's ass. Yeah. I mean, how could you yeah. not? Yeah. <laughs> how, how could you not? Yeah. I really thought you were going to say John Stamos. Oh, really? Yeah. Is there, don't you have a thing with John Stamos? I mean, I, look, we met Stamos years ago. I don't know that I have a thing with John Stamos, <laughs> but, you know, I love the guy. Have you ever dreamed about him? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the day I met him, I did. Yeah. And I think to say the reason you probably brought up Evans is we have spent more time on set. I think that's why. With yeah. Chris Evans than anyone else in the business. Yeah. By like triple, I think. Yeah. 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 yeah, making people across the world jealous just by saying <laughs> that. Um, I know in The Gray Man, I talked to you guys about yeah. the fact that the beginning of each scene, there was sort of a sweeping shot across the city. In this one, there's a spinning element. That's right. So what was that decision? What went into that decision? Is it the duality of people on the, the show? Con- exactly. The concept is, is when are you right side up and when are you upside down in the show? What's the truth, right? There's a, a catchphrase we've been using that everything you know is a lie. And really, the show is an onion that just keeps getting peeled back as you progress through the episodes until the whole thing flips on its head. So. It's, uh, in that regard, it was a lot of fun to make. Uh, it informed that, that stylistic choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and pay attention to when the camera is upside down and when it's right side up. I'm really curious what the two of you are thinking about the recent box office. Just in the fact that you've talked about streaming, that being the future, and now we have like Super Mario crushing it, John Wick crushing it, obviously mm-hmm. Avatar 2. What are your thoughts about how, is, I mean, it's an exciting time. Well, sometimes I think it's important, to, like sometimes we get characterized as like having a bias towards streaming. Like we, we love everything. Like yeah. We value every form of expression for storytelling, right? So we like the box office is an amazing opportunity. We've had... Fantastic experiences through the box, box office, slightly. obviously. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's like you know, yeah. so it's, it's an amazing way to communicate with audiences. But so is streaming. We, you know, our point has always been c- consider the opportunities, the unique opportunities that streaming offers. I was thinking about the fact that I think you've talked about was it Soderbergh who gave you advice after your first film, That's right? Saying if you keep making films like this, you won't work. And That's now right. I feel like tell me how this series. You've kept that, I feel like you've kept that advice stuck in your head because everything you do, you almost up the ante. How is this series upping the ante and how is this sort of taking that advice into account and moving it Well, forward? the scale is certainly yeah. upping the ante. You know, it's a, it's cinematic scale, but it's also global scale. And we're, you know, we're working with writers from other countries who are working on shows at the same time that are all based around the same mythology. The coolest thing I think we've ever done in the business was we had a, a Citadel Summit where the team from India and the team from Italy came to the U.S. at our offices at Agbo, and we all worked together for two days, breaking story and talking about the world and going through the level of detail around the world, and you know it was it was the most inspiring thing we've done. Wow. I mean, this show this show has every two weeks, the show does a virtual writers' room that includes the the various creative teams around the world talking about where they're at, how they're working with the characters. Um, and it's, so it's a, it's a unique experiment in storytelling. And that's the heart of what the ambition here is. Everything you know 
is a lie. First wanted to ask you, just in the fact that this is a first time that anybody has ever done a flagship show yeah. and then there's going to be spin-offs, different languages around the world. Yeah. And Joan Anthony were telling me that you're having these sort of bi-weekly Zoom meetings with other iterations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how as producer, showrunner, how, is that, how does that affect how you create a show and how you put it together? How much more complicated is it from other things you've done? It actually makes it easier. Much easier. Does it? Yeah. 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 And also better. Yes. <laughs> because you have many different perspectives coming to the table and making ideas stronger and stronger. And um, I think that's been a real gift, if anything. It, it's been incredible. Mm -hmm. And there, there are biases as you know, American storytellers, I think, yeah. that blind spots mm -hmm. that we have. And so when we have a truly global writer's room uh, every other week, uh, you know, our incredible partners raise questions or ask questions. And it's just been an amazing sort of learning process for us, for them. And so uh, collaboration is key yeah. uh, on this series yeah. and in everything. But, um, but I think it's, made, it's helped us make something immensely authentic. Yeah. Now it's made me want to ask you, what do they point out to you or what do they, maybe because they are different, if it's a reflection or a mirror, what do you realize about yourselves as American storytellers that's maybe different from the other series? You're Ooh. grinning. <laughs> it's a really good question. It's a very good question. Um, I, I think there's just like an egocentric, you know, sort of bent sometimes yeah. in what are you American talking about? Right, right. I live in LA, I know Always exactly. Always the hero, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and so I think it's just about uh, being able to see ourselves, you know, or American spies, for example, from the perspective uh, from, of the rest of the world. And, and I think that's been very helpful to create characters mm. who are richly complex, who have villainous sides to them, who have heroic sides to them, who really live in the gray. Um, so that's been really, I think, quite, quite exciting. And I think, you know, as ambitious as this first series is, it it truly inhabits the same amount of space as the others. Mm. It's, it's just the introduction, really. And each series has the best of the best from each country coming to the table and delivering at the same level yeah. of execution and ambition. And so that's been really remarkable because I think, you know, to David's point, usually it's Hollywood is, you know, bigger and, you know, um, sort of serves as like the central component. That's not the case at all here. And that's really refreshing. Yeah. Speaking of bigger, was there a sequence? There's, I've only seen the first three episodes. Yeah. It leaves me on such a gorgeous <laughs> cliffhanger that I need the fourth episode. But is there a sequence that you never thought you'd be able to get made and you did and that you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. The tra every sequence in this show yeah. is massive. Yeah, right? it really is. But I think, I think. Do you know what? I don't think we ever thought we would never get it made just because the teams that we are working with yeah. are truly the best of the best and so you know they can pull it off. But I think the one we were most excited to see manifest, you know, from the page was the train. Yeah. Yeah. I want to take it on that train. It's the most gorgeous train Same. I've ever Beautiful, seen. Beautiful, isn't it? Richard and Priyanka, Johnson's I was telling her, she nailed that slow-mo walk. It's oh like my nobody gosh. else could have done that, by no. the way, in the red dress and killer. the quintessential totally. kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're like, yes, and you It's so true. Yeah. But also, something that really works for the sh with it within the show, it is epic, yeah. and it is the, the scale. But for you as producer, showrunner, how was it? to see, because they have such great chemistry, mm -hmm. like the two of them. Mm -hmm. Was that something that you felt from the get-go they had, or did you see it build as they got to know each other? Because um, sometimes it's lightning in a bottle. You either do have it or you don't. Well, it is lightning in a bottle, and this is a real testament to them. Not only is it two actors coming together, playing a character and finding that chemistry, they are each about 50 different versions of themselves <laughs> yes. throughout yeah. the course of this series. So they're coming into each scene, you know, like possessing only a certain amount of knowledge or having you know the full spectrum of knowledge in other instances and yeah. so like to watch them sort of maneuver through that yes. and still find that electricity yes. but like modulating you know to the right levels at the right times was really exciting so true yeah and there was no chemistry reads like we no? we got right. very lucky yeah, yeah. Um, very yeah. very lucky yeah but their chemistry is so palpable like if you feel it you when do. We, we sit at video village it was like oh my god I know, I know. They have been in love for all these years, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's amazing. And the, I think the show hinges on it, truthfully. It does. Yes. If you didn't have that, it wouldn't work. Totally. Um, not that you need inspiration, but were there influences from other spy uh, films of the past, series of the past, um, that you sort of 
not used as inspiration, but looked to that sort of informed maybe either how you wanted to do something or how you wanted to do something that hasn't been done before? It was both, both. yeah, very yeah. much. You know, of course, there's like nods to Bond and Mission Impossible and Born, but then at the same time, and, and, and probably what was most exciting to us was the opportunity to turn the conventions on their head and present something we haven't seen. And so, you know, when you talk about Richard and Priyanka, for example, this series revolves around a duo. And um, it's a duo that truly complements each other and makes the other person even stronger and better. And they operate as a, a singular unit in a lot of ways. And so that's really exciting. And then on top of that, you have a woman, you know, as, as one of them, and a diverse woman. And then also on top of that, you have a dynamic that exists between them for, you know, a majority of the episodes that, that you watched where our female character, you know, is taking a bit of a lead in a way that we don't get to see, and I found that particularly exciting. So when you say you wanted to do something new, in a sense, how would you describe it? Like, how would you describe the vibe of the show, maybe compared to other um, series or films that we've seen in this genre before? Mm. Ooh, I, I think it's sort of an homage in certain ways, yeah. but we're in on the joke, you know, Ooh, in that, oh, I, I, love that I think we like to defy those conventions of the spy genre yeah. and really turn them on their head. Uh, so that is the thing about Citadel, as you said, you know, that, that great cliffhanger at the end of episode three, you never know what to expect with the series. Mm -hmm. um, so we come into it as fans and lovers of, of the spy genre, but we want to do something new and fresh and, and really modern here. Who yeah. wrote the line hot stuff? Oh, you did. You did. Chef's yeah. kiss. That right? feels quintessential, so but it now. also feels like it feels like maybe something from the '80s or '90s. But also, <laughs> let's bring it back I in 2023. Totally. And I love Where how did that come from? Richard just amazing. owned it too. Yeah, it was so really true. yeah. Where did that come from? Oh God, some some recess of this. this I don't know. This I don't know. Brain. This dark dark place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So of, I'm going to ask a really junkety question, but of, I would say, Joe and Anthony yeah. and the entire cast, who would make the best spy in life? Who is oh. sort of the most Ooh. observant and great stealth? Tucci. question. Oh, totally, totally. Because he tooch. can travel. Yeah. There was that um, uh, Topol who who played like Tevye and Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah. They just revealed he was like a Mossad spy for many years. So I always feel like actors, like it's the Julia Child thing too. Yeah. I feel like Tucci's got that going. He speaks many languages, I think. I also think Leslie, even though oh. she's not a spy in this series, like she's unflappable. She's yes. like very cool and yes. like a rock. Yeah.